Good morning. Oh my God, you sound so bright. Good morning. How are you doing? Really? Okay, that's oh. good. Oh, I've had absolute chaos this morning here, Josh. I was the dog sitter was uh, was late, and I was like, please tell me they haven't forgotten her because that dog kicks off. So it's been absolutely insane. Just managed to log on in time. Welcome, Josh. Thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, it's a pleasure as always. Oh, thank you. Right, let's uh, let's kick off with that. Well, we're going to focus primarily on your choices anyway today, but um, let's start off with the MP crossing the aisle. Yeah, so he's the the first, and then I I read that there's um, five more apparently considering something similar. But the main thing, and I I've I've literally seen nobody mention this, is just just the sheer idea that you can cross like ideologically from one side of of the political spectrum <laughs> to the other in the space of five seconds and the labor party can raise zero zero questions about how you've suddenly made this wonderful turnaround where you're now just apparently going to oppose everything the conservatives have done having yeah spent it, however many years it's in, extraordinary yeah. isn't it i mean it is as you say it is a huge ideological shift and I, I noted one of your tweets which was about the five more conservative MPs and you said it's a one-party state and that really is what we're dealing with now isn't it Josh? Yeah and it's just it's just more proof that that realistically the vast vast majority of our MPs are basically all aligned on I would say most major issues the 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 culture war stuff that they all like to pretend are the big the big issues they will focus on a hundred percent their you know their their massive differences but when it really comes down to to brass tacks and the the economics of, of what they both believe they're, they're they're both in the exact same park of yeah neoliberalism it, it's ridiculous and that is exactly what it is neoliberalism that's exactly what it is and it's 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 a ridiculous state of affairs do you think that uh, just corbyn was the real deal yeah, I, I actually do. Um, I was having this conversation with um, one of my one of my friends who who was not a Corbyn fan. So we, we have a lot of banter about it sometimes. But um, he he has finally conceded that <laughs> the best part was he was he was just a harmless old man <laughs> was the was his description. He didn't like uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Right. But um, that's as close to him admitting as is ever going to happen that he wouldn't have been just another establishment stooge and i think that's the the reason that that i thought he would have been um a great leader for the country and um i'm sure many other people would uh, likely agree <laughs> right well not lugabugs he says no corbyn is establishment and coase is up to the murderers oh goodness me uh chris said i liked corbyn um so that's that's at least two saying completely different things and <laughs> and so much the better for it frankly because the whole point about this is like you know freedom of opinion freedom of expression that's what we're here for so josh this all obviously kicked off over the whole party gate thing what are your thoughts about that? Why have we only just heard about this two years on? I, I find it stunning that all of the journalists in Westminster had no knowledge of any <laughs> of these parties. It's like, are you seriously telling me that all of these journalists are, are, are so incompetent and so unable to figure out what's going on in Westminster yeah. in the midst of, of lockdowns and not very much like actual activity happening beyond Zoom calls, uh, that none of them had an inkling that this had happened. And even if they did, that they chose not to, to seek out any information about it. And I suspect it's because most of them were either at the parties or throwing similar ones themselves. Right, exactly. Exactly. I keep asking LBC to confirm whether Rachel Johnson was at uh, parties over Christmas or not, because I was at a recent uh, recording with Rachel Johnson in which she slipped up and talked about getting in through the security gates with Nimco Ali, who is Carrie Johnson's best mate, at, uh, over Christmas. 
And I was like, okay, oh, that's that's really interesting. So I keep asking that because she's obviously used her LBC platform to say, my brother sticks by the rules. Never does he break the rules. La, 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 la. Listen, Rachel, let's find out whether you broke the rules, shall we? Because I'm desperate to find that out. Um, because LBC are so totalitarian about all of this. Nick Ferrari, I think, wants people fined. Sheila Fogarty wants people po poisoned. Um, and uh, James O'Brien, I think, is, uh, is certainly all, you know, pro mask and everything. And uh, so LBC is very much on this. But uh, Rachel is not fessing up, in my opinion. So I think we need to get to the bottom of that. So obviously, this is all as a consequence as well of what's been going on this week. Uh, Covid restrictions being lifted in England. Thank God, children's masks uh, no longer need to wear them in school. Thank God that that, as far as I was concerned, and every expert that I talked to was child abuse um, and uh, scrapping of the vaccine passports. Well, the same is happening in NI, right? Yeah, we're we're a little like about a week behind. So most of the, most of our restrictions are going on Wednesday of next week, um, which is yeah, just fantastic to see because. Yeah, the hospitality industry. Um, so I worked in quite a lot of restaurants and bars when I was um, at school and uni and stuff. So I know quite a lot of people in, in that industry in Belfast and they were just getting hammered. Like the second that those passports got got introduced, they just they got absolutely decimated. Um, and it's so good to see that at least some semblance of like reasonableness <laughs> has returned and they thought, OK, for whatever reason like i mean the reasons uh, you could speculate like yeah. mildly yeah but um, the, there's definitely been a huge huge backtracking over the past week right. and it's it's unbelievable to watch like the people who who were most in favor of the passports in northern ireland suddenly are, are calling for the government to have a clear roadmap out of lockdowns and everything and like right. it was like so do you just expect us to pretend that you weren't like the person who's caused all this damage right right that's that is literally what grinds my gears <laughs> is that we have like jeremy vine suddenly tweeting you know sympathetic articles about what the, the sort of the devastation lockdown has caused you are culpable mr vine you piers morgan or people like you who ramped it up it was so scary josh and now that obviously you know, these people aren't idiots. They, they're in their position because they know how to switch and turn very quickly as the sort of mood takes. And Piers Morgan is the same. Suddenly, Piers Morgan is questioning people who have died with COVID and of COVID, something that I myself and others were doing two years ago, you know, almost two years ago. It's, it's a bit late to be doing that now. I have a, some people are of the mind, Josh, that it's like, OK, better late than never. But I'm of the mind that you're only doing this because you see which way the direction of travel is going and you don't want to be left out in the cold. And I think that they are hugely responsible for what we've we've been going through, Josh. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm in two minds about it oh. because at, at one point, at one on one side, I'm thinking, OK, you know, this uh, for me, it's 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 fantastic to see, and you know the power of of both like momentum and and just like people. It's they're kind of once once like an idea gets rolling and 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 starts to like become sort of more widely accepted. There's like a tipping point at which point it's like okay, this is now I don't know, in the public psyche is like the way it the way it is essentially. And I think we saw that happen quite a lot with with um, a lot of the COVID restrictions that like people would like hear that this was the way it was and then you know they would like internalize it slowly accept and be like well okay that's just the way it is yeah and i think that's like now happening with people realizing that perhaps you know lockdowns are not a good idea um and that a lot of the measures we took were perhaps ineffective um and definitely not thought out in terms of their their, their consequences and that's the that's the big problem really is that you know it, all the decisions that we made had huge trade-offs like you can't just make massive sweeping changes to the way like lives function without like huge huge trade-offs and ultimately I think many of them are starting to realize that those trade-offs were not considered right and <laughs> that, that but once that is like realized by like a certain number of people you go okay momentum means it's going to be very difficult to go backwards on this 
and we're, we're moving in a good direction. But at the same time, I'm also like, you can't just stand there and now suddenly pretend like you weren't totally in favor of all of these things that have caused all of this, you know, untold levels exactly. of damage. And demonize those of us who were daring to ask questions. And that's mm. all people like yeah. I were doing. And we got demonized. Boris Johnson authorized 126 million pounds to be paid for a campaign which demonized anybody asking questions about the mRNA. That's an outrageous use of public funds. And of course, we had the guy from Number 10's Nudge Unit last week come out in unheard and say, look, you know, that. They overdid it. They over egged the pudding. They scared you all too much. I mean, it's outrageous. The manipulation of a nation is it, it's appalling. I don't even know what this is going to do to our psychology in the long run, because we are changed as a people. We've got to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, and this isn't, yeah, this isn't to minimize like any of any of the damage that's been done. Um, you know, I, I'm lucky enough to to not have to worry about like any kids or anything in my life. Um, no. I'm I'm very thankful. I'm lucky I wasn't at university, but I feel like I came out of the this two years like way smarter and way sharper and just way more resilient in terms of it's like right okay. Before the pandemic, it's like I was skeptical about the government, <laughs> and now I'm like these people need to have all of the restraints physically possible put on their par they and i i i feel like that was an important realization i I, I struggle to believe that i'm the only person that has realized no. because you know i used to i used to listen to say people like like jordan peterson or um talk about the dangers of of totalitarianism and how <laughs> how close all of us are to that without really like ever noticing or realizing and and you know you had talked about like being able to like look and stare into like think about what you would have done in those dark times and I think this has given like at least a glimpse into how rapidly we can imitate yeah. a totalitarian state oh yeah and oh, it, it was easy yeah, yeah. And I mean that's it, yeah, yeah. It, it is, but it's great. The The realisation is happening all across the world because exactly, Angie says, you're not the only person, Josh, and that's exactly right. I know people, very conventional people, Josh, you know, 2.5 children, nine to fives, not, not looking down on any of those things at all, but just, you know, they go about their life in a conventional manner and they're happy to do so who have never questioned these things, but, but it's become so transparent, so in our face that things don't make sense. And that's the thing is people are feeling it on a gut level. They're like, this, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't feel right. We were told that the jabs would free us. Now we've discovered we need two, three, four boosters and more. And you have lunatics like Vanessa Feltz saying, shoot me up with 27 injections. And she is a lunatic, I should say, Josh. She was there when we did that recording with uh, Rachel Johnson. And I fell out with all of them because I <laughs> dared to criticise Boris Johnson and say he was notoriously lazy. And <laughs> Vanessa, Vanessa Feltz lost her shit. And she was, <laughs> she was like, you can't say he's lazy. And I'm like, oh, God, say, get a grip. All these people were piling in on me for saying that the prime minister was lazy. Anyway, by the by, but I love those sort of things. I love to be able to tell you all about those sort of things as well. It's like like an insight into the madness of those people mm. um the other thing josh that people are concerned about in the comments and I, and I am too is that this announcement is just another one another way of it, it it's what bruce scott dr bruce scott who comes on rise calls menticide and menticide is where they basically do one thing and say another or they do things like say you must wear masks and then suddenly you see all of them, including the queen, all gathered together without masks on. And it's to say, you know, we are higher than you. We're more superior to you. And that's known as menticide in psychology. And so the worry is they're just going to flip this round again. Because you remember Nadine Zawi was saying there's absolutely nothing we're going to do about COVID passports. The next thing we see, they're putting out tenders for it on their websites. So do you do you do you worry this might be another ruse? Yeah, I mean, it is in the back of my head, but I feel like they they suffered horrendously when, so they gave us Freedom Day or whatever 
in the summer and then to bring the, some of the restrictions back like they they were they were really suffering um in the in the opinion polls like i think it, we saw over sort of christmas time was the first time that the the public at least in the polls <laughs> um was uh, a majority were opposed to further restrictions and that was a real tipping point because that's the that is what has been guiding government policy for basically the entire pandemic is like what the people will accept is yes. nothing to do um as far as i can tell with whatever sort of new well obviously there's been a pattern of, of the way some of the the measures have rolled out but it's not been that's not been i think the driving factor in what different countries have done i think it's been a case of what will they accept um and yet the, there's been a lot of opinion polling and that's that's not unique to the united kingdom either i've seen stories like that in places like canada in um like california um loads of places where it's been driven by public opinion so now that the public are having this realization that yeah. there was a huge cost to these decisions i think it will be increasingly difficult to to backtrack on it especially when you see that like the entire machine all suddenly like backpedaling like i've never seen <laughs> yeah. uh, people like like hillary jones uh oh. stephen nolan like people people who have like really really hammered hard and like used really really outrageously inflammatory language absolutely towards people who yeah decided they they didn't want to take the the the, the vaccine for for whatever reason um and and to watch them now suddenly have to like really like change their tune in in a matter of weeks is um i think an indication that the tide has turned like the, the, these people aren't they're not leaders they're followers you know they they they, they, they you know they smell which way the wind's blowing and, and dash yeah. to, to pretend they were running first yeah exactly esther says oh my god the show has exploded what is going on today yeah it's wonderful we've got so many new viewers this morning thank you so much for joining us esther also wants to know if josh is single he says he has no children <laughs> Right, Josh, I can't, I can't do anything about uh, about <laughs> Esther or any of them that have a crush on you. Um, so listen, let's talk about because you said something really interesting to me, and you thought that the Belfast Civic Dollars Dollars Program may potentially be the start of a social credit system. Well, that's very concerning. Tell us more. Yeah, so um, I had uh, this woman Melissa Shamay um, on my show. I re recorded in, uh, during the week, so I think it's been, I'm going to put it out this week. So we talked a lot about what was underlying the, the vaccine passport system. So we talked about its uh, capability to have uh, like a digital ID already, like it's already built in underneath that that can be uh, set in. But we also talked about this program that's been underway since 2016 um, in Northern Ireland that will centralize um, all of your data, your medical records, your financial records, your um, criminal records, all into one like central, like system and we we talked about the the smart cities initiative of which belfast has been picked by the world economic forum to be one of their leading smart cities interesting um and then we looked at this program that has been introduced called the civic dollars so essentially it's uh like you'll sign up and then if you go to say um orma park in belfast you can like spend some time there and you earn like your little digital civic dollars and then you can spend them to to like either tip lo local businesses or like book say basketball courts and and things like that and we because we because we talked a lot about how the vaccine passports were ultimately not about health whatsoever it was about bringing in this digital id system or this 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 system where it's a it doesn't have to be as insidious when it's put in place so you can have the the vaccine passports you know under the guise of okay we're going to make sure people aren't infected or hmm. you know well yeah for the not, public not, good yeah for the public good and, you know it's always for the good it's always for the public good and they always <laughs> use it at, at, in terms of health because that has been proven to be the most um powerful in terms of propaganda mm, i didn't know that that's interesting um so essentially we were looking at like what what is underlying all this and the vaccine passports are a system by which the government has a central control by which they can grant access to society in which they will change definitely the criteria on a whim as many countries have already done moving from you know say you can take a test do you have to be vaccinated do you have to be boosted do you have to be 
quadrupled, like jabbed and all the way up. And, and that doesn't end there. The, the government never ends there. That's mm-hmm. never, it never stops. And we were basically talking about what underlies all these things. And then we saw the Civic Dollars program and we were really talking about what, what is this, what is this laying in to, to our, our system? It's laying in a way by which you're being financially rewarded for doing the things that the state wants and being rewarded digitally, um, where is an even more terrifying part when you consider that, you know, the Bank of England wants to bring in their central bank digital currency that will be programmable and trackable and that that will be able to be, you know, determined what you can spend your money on. They'll be able to see exactly where you're spending your money. They'll be able to grant you more money depending on your behavior and the that just becomes a, an amount of power that no <sighs> person, system, government, corporation, any of them should ever have. That is just too dangerous to like human democracy and freedom. And it needs to be opposed and called out. And I, I, it, it's all being laid out in front of us without our discussion or vote or, or even understanding that that's what's happening. Like the, this program the, where everything will be centralized into one system, the civic dollars, the influence of the World Economic Forum on the Smart Cities Initiative, all of these things are happening. It's it's not on the front page of the Belfast Telegraph and it's not being discussed in the Times. It's like, it's not being discussed on BBC News. This is all just like sliding in and we really need to consider like what this means. Like maybe that's the way we want to go. Okay, sweet. Like, let's talk about it. Yeah, well, it's the not talking about it that is problematic, obviously, because then it suggests something really nefarious. And I mean, it's interesting because some of the comments are saying, no, all of this was all planned in response to you saying that they are, they test us to see how far they can go. And I think I think it's actually both. I think both work together. And I, I think it's very interesting that England now has less restrictions than pretty much anywhere else in the world in the western world that we know about Mm. and the pushback has been amazing and there's going to be tomorrow worldwide um protests out there i'm going to be at the london one and it's you know it's just people coming together because the thing is even though england appears to be okay the rest of the world isn't and it's not okay that we're all right and our brothers and sisters elsewhere aren't so we all have to sort of rise together for it but i do think that it is actually a combination of two. And I think the pushback is important because some people get really defeatist about these things, Josh, and they're like, it's already, already laid out. We can't do anything about it. No, we mustn't get like that because that's when they've got us, right? That's when we just roll over and just give up and give up all our civil liberties and our freedoms and everything. The whole idea of smart cities just unnerves me, Josh. What does that actually mean? You see, like, right, this is, this is like part of the issue because sometimes it can sound really crazy when you talk about this, because on their own, all of the programs that they're proposing are not necessarily like a bad thing, like a, like a centralized uh, place where all your medical records are stored. It's a great idea. You know, if you go to a hospital you know, anywhere in, in the UK, for example, all of your digital records are there. Your doctor immediately has access to it. There's so much we can learn from like large scale, like, analysis of medical records but that could totally be anonymized um there there's i don't see like any any issue with people being able to use digital currencies um to to pay for things there's nothing wrong as far as i can tell with like systems being integrated um with like being able to like use your phone to scan yourself into places like all of these things by themselves are not bad things um ultimately they, they might make humans lives easier the problem is that they're being ushered in with a system that Mm. is all about centralized control. Mm. And that is where it becomes really insidious and really dangerous because no one should have that amount of power. No, that's just, it's, it's, it's just like, that's it. Like simply, simply put like, and that's, that's the thing that I, I, I try to continue to reiterate to people who don't really agree with me on a lot of these things, because, um, Matthias Desmet um, from the University of Ghent, uh, the, one of the professors who has been talking a lot about um, mass formation psychosis, who I will actually also be having on my show next week. I should just say, anybody who's not familiar with Joss, he is the editor of the GIST, J-I-S-T, and the author of Brexit, the Establishment Civil War, which is absolutely worth reading. And I'll put a link in the description at the end of the show. So go on, carry on, Josh. Oh, thank you. Yes. And my show is called Chatter. 
Um, it's on YouTube and Spotify, Apple as well. Um, so uh, he has spoken about what's happened over the past two years, but also about this, this idea of mass formation psychosis where people just get like, in, in, in uncertain times, they, they look to someone to come along and say, I'm going to fix it all. You yeah. know, if, you know, they look for the, the, you know, potentially the big strong man to come protect them from all the enemies. They look for the, the guy or the, yeah, the girl to come and like sort out all their problems. They say, I'm going to do it. I've got this. Just you give me all the power and I will fix it. And that is not a new story in human history. Um, I, I, when, when I first heard him talking about it, I was immediately thinking about the way that Trump supporters view Donald Trump, you know, it's, he was great in that he, you know, stuck it to the establishment, but he was in power for four years and failed to do basically anything about big tech. That was his big enemy and he failed to do anything about it. And his supporters won't accept this because he is the big guy who came along in the uncertain times to save them. And the same thing has happened with with Fauci and the 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 whole like I don't know COVID establishment I don't know how you just des describe them but they've come along and said hey just give us all the power and we'll fix it we'll take away all these problems and the way to combat that is to offer both a positive vision of how it might be better and to like point out that the authoritarianism that has come along with this <laughs> is more dangerous than the virus itself and that is the part that needs to be like constantly reiterated right there right there what you just said what right there that is exactly what needs to be constantly reiterated josh i hate to cut you there but we've got one more story do you think you can explain it to us in two minutes which is about obviously the chinese funding of uk tech mm. okay so um so the advert i saw was on reddit really strangely and it was about um it was an advert about uk businesses getting investment from china and so I spent quite a lot of time looking through the page and essentially it's the UK government both advertising that you might want to get investment from China, but then about 50% of the site is them being like, but watch out, they're going to steal your intellectual property if you're not careful. And it's such a weird paradox where they're both advertising this as an option and then saying, but they're going to steal all your intellectual property. And the, in, they cite a case study on the site about um uh, a chinese company with that might have links to the to the yeah the communist state and could be involved in corporate espionage and i'm like that is all of them there's literally all of them like this is not like maybe a few companies have, have involvement from the chinese communist party it's like it's all of them all of them you know stop being so naive yeah um, uh, yeah, so exactly. that's, that's basically <laughs> Well, it's important. It's really important. We should keep an eye on that. Uh, Luggerbug says, ah, oh, love him. Josh could listen all day. And, uh, oh, Craig, we've got four times the amount of viewers than uh, Eamon Holmes at the moment on GB News Online, which is oh. amazing. Well done, all. I saw Eamon actually laughing about uh, saying ITV are increasing their advertising because they're worried about him. But Eamon, are you worried about us? So anyway, listen, Josh Hamilton, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's always a pleasure, Josh, to see you. No and uh, we hope to see you again very, very soon. Have a fantastic weekend. Take good care of yourself. You too. Thanks very much, Sonia. Great to chat. Everybody, Josh Hamilton, take good care.